Daytona is just around the corner and Petty GMS has a superstar driver lineup heading into this next NASCAR season. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about a couple of other teams that could be on the rise going into this new year. Hello everybody, welcome to Dirty Air. I'm your host Alex Lambert. I hope everybody's having a great start to the new year. This is the first episode of Dirty Air of the year. I'm super excited for it. We have a great year coming up and a whole lot of action to get into. But I do want to start out the year. What better way to start out the show this year than talking about some of the rising teams. Some of the teams I think could be a big threat this year that maybe haven't been as big of a threat over the last few decades. So we'll get into that for sure. Uh, before we get into that, I do want to mention... Uh, a tweet from Nate Ryan here regarding Chicagoland Speedway. I guess I'm kind of one of those guys that are a bit nostalgic about Chicagoland Speedway. It was a, a great racetrack. I watched it when I was younger. I loved the racing there. Uh, so I would like to see it return to NASCAR. So I always kind of pay attention to the Chicagoland news. Uh, but uh, Chicagoland Speedway, here's a tweet by Nate Ryan, will return this year as the second track in the inaugural Super Motocross playoffs. So I guess Super Motocross, I don't, I've never, I don't think I've ever set through a full event. Uh, don't know a whole lot about it. I guess they're going to have a playoffs this year for the first time. The second race in those playoffs will be held on September 23rd at Chicagoland Speedway. Uh, he also notes at the bottom here, after being dormant since 2019, Chicagoland will join Daytona Speedway and Atlanta Motor Speedway in hosting dirt bikes. I know Daytona's done it for a couple of years. I think Atlanta Motor Speedway did it with, while they were doing the repave there. I don't know if they've done it before that or after that, uh, but definitely exciting to see some, uh, some familiar tracks uh, you know, doing other things outside of NASCAR. That's definitely good for NASCAR themselves and the racetracks themselves. So glad to see that. There is the uh, actually a picture of what the track is supposed to look like uh, right there. So hopefully it um hopefully everything's go well. I'm excited to see that and see how that goes. But let's get into what this show was really supposed to be about. What this episode's really supposed to be about, and that is the up and coming teams, mainly Petty GMS. I'm gonna talk about them last. I want to talk about Colleague Racing and Richard Childress Racing. Uh, before I talk about Petty GMS this year, but let's start out by talking about Colleague Racing because Colleague has had a fantastic uh, couple of seasons, right? I mean, you had A.J. Allmendinger winning the Indianapolis Road Course. You had Justin Haley running consistently. I mean, did he get any wins? No. Did he compete for a couple of wins? I don't know. He was up there in some of those races. He had a, especially the second half of the year after that halfway point of last year, I think he had a very solid um a bunch of races there. I mean, I think he did a really good job uh, considering that team is brand new to being full-time in the Cup Series. I think they did a phenomenal job with Justin Haley, and it'll be interesting to see what he does at Colleague Racing next season. Obviously, Justin Haley is one of those younger drivers, but he's got a little bit of Cup experience, uh, a little bit of Cup experience, a little, a lot of Xfinity experience. So it should be exciting to see what he brings to the table. But what's really going to be interesting is A.J. Allmendinger stepping into a full-time ride at Colleague Racing. and I am extremely excited to see what he can do. Watching him last year was impressive. The amount of top tens he got on a part-time schedule is, in, is is super impressive. That team got so many top tens on a part-time schedule with Noah Gragson, with A.J. Allmendinger. That is very impressive and very hard to do. This is the NASCAR Cup Series. It is extremely difficult to be consistently getting top tens for a full-time driver. Kyle Busch couldn't even do it this year after his worst year ever, and he's one of the best out there. Uh, and there were a lot of drivers that could not do it, household names that could not do it, but A.J. Allmendinger was up there, especially at the road courses. He's phenomenal at these road courses, and with more of those being added to the schedule, now six of those going to be on the schedule this upcoming year, he could be a real threat to not only make the playoffs, but maybe make a fairly you know, respectable playoff run, and I would not be surprised at all to see that. Colleagues starting to fill in the notebook a little bit with this brand new next-gen race car. They're going to be exciting to watch next year. going to be really interesting to see how A.J. Allmendinger can do for himself and help the other full-time uh, colleague racing team as well. And then, of course, another one I want to talk about before I talk about Petty GMS is obviously going to be Richard Childress. This is a team that ever since the loss of Dale Earnhardt, or really ever since Kevin Harvick left the team, has not been a championship caliber team. They haven't been consistently running for championships. They've got a few race wins. Austin Dillon's won the Coke 600. I think that was back in 2017. Austin Dillon won the Daytona 500 back in 2018. We had Tyler Riddick have a fantastic year this year. He's obviously a very talented race car driver moving to 2311 next year, driving for Toyota. His contract was bought out. Um, so he's moving over to Toyota, but he had a fantastic year this year, getting three wins for that organization, and one of those wins coming from Austin Dillon, making it four wins this year for RCR. That's pretty incredible, uh, considering the past few, I don't know, the past few decades for them has not been 
quite as good or not shown numbers like we saw this season. So there is a bit of a, a, a light at the end of the tunnel for Richard Childress Racing, but they've signed on Kyle Busch next year. And you see, I got my new Kyle Busch hat and Kyle Busch koozie and stuff. I'm ready. I'm a big Kyle Busch fan. I'm really excited to see what he can do for Chevrolet, what he can do for RCR, because RCR has struggled a little bit uh, over the last few years, but last year I really saw a whole lot of speed. We saw Tyler Reddick consistently in the top. Last year was a bit of a fluky season. Everything was so new. We saw a lot of mistakes. Result Results weren't always what they probably should have been, and I think that's going to kind of narrow things down. I think that's going to slow down a little bit going into 2023. I don't think we're going to see as much parity. I don't think we're going to see as many pit road mistakes, as many driver mistakes. Now that we have a full year of NASCAR in the next-gen notebook, I think those mistakes will be, they're still going to be there. Trust me, you don't have to worry about that, but there will still be mistakes. There will still be some parity, but I don't think it's going to be as dramatic as it was in 2022. Therefore, you know, just looking at last year, Tyler Reddick had so much speed, mistakes on pit road, uh, mechanical failures, all that should be limited. It's going to be exciting to see what that same team, that same organization, that same crew chief can do with a year that I think is going to be a little bit less fluky. Not only that, we're going to have Kyle Busch, two-time NASCAR Cup Series champion and 60-time winner behind the wheel. Got to watch RCR next year. It's going to be exciting to watch that team. Not only that, we also have Austin Dillon, and I think Austin Dillon is a driver that's kind of underrated. Is he one of the top drivers in NASCAR? No. I mean, is he a Kevin Harvick? Is he a Kyle Busch? No, definitely not. But he's somewhat consistent. He's been driving since 2014. 2014 was his rookie season. He's got some of that experience, and whatever you say, you can say the next gen's completely different. There are still a lot of similarities. We're still going to a lot of the same racetracks. We're still going to a lot of the same type racetracks, and that does matter. Experience does matter, and that's why you see some of the older guys or some of the younger guys take so many years to get to victory lane because it's important to have that experience. Austin Dillon, with the experience that he's gained over the last, I don't know, seven, eight years, however long he's been in the Cup Series, and then adding Kyle Busch to that, and those two, obviously, from what I understand, were friends before the agreement, they seem to be working well together. It's going to be really exciting to see. And as long as RCR is be able to back up Austin Dillon, which you know he will, and as long as he's able to back up Kyle Busch, which I'm confident he will, I think there could be there could be a serious threat there uh, between RCR uh, this season, between those two drivers. I think both of them could easily make the playoffs, and I think both of them could have a run at, at something big. So uh, we've, we've heard Kyle Busch say in the past he wants to go race for championships. He, wanna, he kind of wants to pull off a Tom Brady or a Peyton Manning, go to a different team, and win the Super Bowl. And that's kind of what uh, Kyle Busch is trying to do. Uh, moving forward, and we'll see how Austin Dillon benefits uh, from that. Kurt Busch was kind of one that always went around. Uh, Kyle Busch's brother always went around, went around and helped teams. Now Kyle Busch is trying to return that at RCR this year, so it should be a lot of fun to watch in 2023. Let's talk about the main story of this video, what I was really excited to talk about outside of Kyle Busch, because I'm a Kyle Busch fan, but Petty GMS. Petty GMS driver lineup, and I've said this in the past, has a superstar driver lineup. You've got Eric Jones racing full-time. He's won the Southern 500 twice in somewhat decent equipment. That is a, arguably the hardest race to win in NASCAR. Uh, takes a lot of drive, raw driver talent to win the Southern 500. He's won one of those. He's won the Daytona uh, summer race before. Eric Jones is a experienced driver. When he went to Joe Gibbs Racing, didn't have the best start to the season. I talked about experience a little bit ago. He's got that experience now. A few years in the Cup Series, got a lot of races under his belt. I think Eric Jones is a really talented driver, and I still think, you know, I, I remember being really upset when I found out Joe Gibbs Racing was letting him go. I'm not saying that was the wrong decision because they got Christopher Bell out of it, obviously, but I remember being upset about that because Eric Jones was so talented in the truck, so talented in the Xfinity Series, and then just had a slow start to the Cup Series, uh, which is normal. That's not unusual to have a slow start going into the top level of racing in probably the world, at least in the United States. It's really difficult to do that. So Eric Jones, I think that's a powerhouse driver right there alone. Then you've got Noah Gragson. Noah Gregson dominated the Xfinity Series last year. Many races, him, Ty Gibbs, and Allmendinger uh, were battling it out for the championship all year long. That was a really fun season to watch. And now Noah Gregson coming up to the Cup Series. Like I said, that lack of experience is there. So I don't know if he's going to you know, get straight to victory lane. But I think having a driver like Noah Gregson with Eric Jones, those two can work together, should be a lot of fun. But then you got the big one. Jimmy Johnson coming in, seven-time NASCAR champion. Look. I'm not saying he's going to go out there and win races, but I think it's important to have him behind the wheel because I think 
the notes he can take, the, the feedback he can give to the team there for Eric Jones and for Noah Gragson could be incredibly useful to both of those full-time drivers, and it's going to be exciting to see what Jimmy Johnson can do. He's going to try to make the Daytona 500 uh, this upcoming season in just a few weeks, less than six weeks away now. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I hope I hope he makes it. I would love to see seven time back in the, in the Daytona 500. I think that would be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, but another thing I want to mention that I think Jimmy Johnson can really help with uh, maybe even more so towards Noah Gragson than Eric Jones, is the health. We've seen Noah Gragson get really sick after some of these races. I mean, obviously, shotgunning a beer that the fan that the fans give you through the fence isn't the isn't going to help that situation too much. Uh, but but Noah Gragson has gotten out of the car after a 300 mile or a 400 mile race really sick, or um, and that's I don't think that's really good. And he raced some 400 mile races this year and some 500 mile races this year in the Cup Series, and he gets really sick. I don't think that's good because if he's not feeling well after 300 miles at Charlotte in the Xfinity Series, how's he going to be able to get through one of the biggest and most enduring races like the Coca-Cola 600 or or the Bristol Night Race, 500 laps around Bristol uh, in, in, in the banking? That's a very physical racetrack. I think Jimmy Johnson can help him with that because even if he's able to win under those circumstances, under very uncomfortable feelings, I'm sure he's not very comfortable right before he throws up on the front straightaway, um, what can he do if he feels good? What can he do if Jimmy Johnson is helping him to stay fit? Jimmy Johnson is one of the most fit drivers probably in NASCAR. He used to run the Daytona Half Marathon right before the Daytona 500 every year. He's very fit. He does a lot of running, does a lot of exercise. If he can help Noah Gragson with that, I think that can be a real benefit to Noah Gragson moving forward. If he's able to dominate the Xfinity Series not very healthily, what can he do when he's healthy and feeling great? Can he be more dangerous? We saw some, kind of the Tony Stewart effect of this. Tony Stewart would get out the car feeling sick sometimes. They hired, a, a, from what I understand, uh, this is a story I read a long time ago. I wish I could find it so I could cite it. But uh, apparently he got a personal trainer. They helped him out a little bit, and he was feeling way better after uh, after running those long NASCAR Cup races. And that's going to be exciting to see uh, what Jimmy Johnson can do for Petty GMS. So I'm really excited. we got a lot to look forward to for 2023. Uh, of course, we have so much action. There's so much to talk about, but we'll certainly get on into it. Uh, I'll be back next Monday for another episode of Dirty Air. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the show. And of course, if you like the video, like and subscribe. And of course, in 2023, let's get rowdy.